take this day, Lord, to celebrate Val, her service to the Los Angeles Fire Department, her service and her leadership, Lord, her motherhood, Lord, her sisterhood. Father, we just are grateful for the time that we had with Val. Lord, we ask for your presence today to be with us. In your precious son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning and uh, welcome. My name is Tim Worrell. I'm a chaplain for the Los Angeles Fire Department and honored to stand before you today to celebrate our sister Val and the life and the legacy that she left behind, the service that she committed to. On behalf of the Roberts family, thank you for attending today to show your love and affection and support. And uh, we're just blessed and honored to have this beautiful port uh, here behind us. Our water display from Fireboat 2 where Val worked was beautiful. Uh, we thank the chief of our Los Angeles Fire Department and her staff uh, for supporting this, for the port, for supporting, and for everything down here. And also, thank you to the Crowley Tugs for allowing us to uh, gather here in front of their business. Chuck Swindoll, Swindoll was an evangelical Christian pastor, author, educator, and radio preacher. And he had this to say about attitude. He said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It's more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstance, than failures, than success, than what other people think, say, or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, skill. It'll make, a break, make or break a company, a church, a home, a fire department. And the remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude that we embrace for the day. We can't change our past. We can't change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We can't change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play the one string that we have, and that's our attitude. I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. So I ask this question, what is your attitude today? What is the attitude of your heart? And it's my prayer that through this message of hope uh, that you'll leave here today with an attitude of hope. As firefighters, we see a lot of death. And for some of you here, this might be the first time you've experienced someone passing away. Or you may have dealt with it in a recent fashion with a family member. But I'm here to tell you today that death is not death. It's, it's a transference from one existence to the next. See, this isn't the finality of where we are. As, uh, as Christians, we believe that there's life after death. There's heaven, there's eternity. If the house is heaven, then death is merely the porch that brings us into that. You see, death is no death if it kills no part of us except that which hindered us from perfect life. Death is not death if it raises us up from a moment of darkness into light, from weakness into strength, from sinfulness to holiness. Death is not death if it perfects our sight and lets us behold him in whom we've believed. Death is not death if it rids us of fear and doubt, of sickness and disease, of sorrow and sadness. And death is not death if it brings us to those whom we've loved and lost. You see, death is not death. Christ conquered death for himself and for those who trust in him. Any in and out Burger fans? Yeah? On the bottom of the drink cup, if you look at it, it says John 3.16. 
And you might see it in the football stadium with the guy painted on his face or on his chest, or you might see it in a movie reference. But John 3.16, it says so simply that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. The Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the church in Thessalonica, he wrote, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others have with no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring him those who have fallen asleep. And what Paul's saying there is like, we, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard in our hearts and our minds for us to process this loss of life. Loss of Val, gone too soon. But we have hope that we can be with her again. We have hope that there is a place for us that this isn't it. If this was all we had to live for was just this existence in this earth, that's hard to fathom. Paul goes on to say, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. That's the support that we need to draw from to build one another up, to remember Val, to talk about her legacy, to talk about her accomplishments, to see those growing through her children and her grandson. The Gospel of Luke says, uh, Assuredly, I say to you that today you will be with me in paradise. This was when Jesus was being crucified, the thief on the cross. He said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Why did the thief ask that? The thief knew he was dying. He knew there had to be something else. Well, shoot, do you need to accept Jesus and have a confirmation and be baptized and go through some crazy ritual to have salvation? No. Again, John 3, 16 said, God so loved. God, the greatest lover of all, so loved to the greatest degree. No one can love more than God. That he gave. He gave the greatest gift. His only son. That whoever believes in him. So that's the simplicity of it, right? You just have to believe. Whoever believes in him would not perish. And that's a void what is not heaven will not perish and have the greatest escape but have that's with greatest certainty everlasting life if we back it up into the Old Testament Psalm 23 another great one I love that you see in movies and, and hear in songs and, and hear preached um, Charles Spurgeon cited Henry Beecher when he said the psalm, this psalm, Psalm 23, this psalm has put more grief to rest than all the philosophy in the whole world. And this is the Lord is my shepherd. The psalm was written by David when he was being chased after, after by Saul. When he was uncertain of his destiny, when he was uh, afraid and hiding in the caves, trying to avoid capture and death. David penned this psalm, and, and being a shepherd, he knew that tending to the flock was where his heart was, and he knew that that's where God's heart was. And so he goes on to say, the Lord is my shepherd. He doesn't say, if the Lord is my shepherd. He doesn't say, I hope the Lord is my shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of hope, I will fear no death, fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And this is the relationship that David had with God. He knew that he was his shepherd. God provided his supply. It was adequate. It wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't abundant, although it can be. But it was adequate. It's what David needed at the time. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's rest. God wants to give you all rest. He doesn't want you to be tied up in anxiety and fear. He wants rest. And rest comes when the shepherd has dealt with four things. Fear, friction, flies, and famine. What are the, what's the fear in your life? What's the friction that's rubbing wrong? What is the pestilence or the flies that are in there trying to disrupt what is going on? And are you hungry? Are you hungry for hope? Are you hungry for love? Are you hungry for God? He leaves me beside still waters. That's refreshment God wants to give. And he wants to restore, provide healing, guidance, and purpose. David says, I will fear no evil. That's the protection. Greater is he who's in us than he is in the world. God provides that protection. He says, you are with me. That's the faithfulness. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's discipline, defense, control. Sebastian's probably learned a lot about discipline in the last few weeks. Congratulations on finishing boot camp. Your mom would be proud. She is proud. You anoint my head with oil, that's consecration, and my cup runs over. That's the fullness of the blessing. God wants to bless each and every one of us. He doesn't want us to win the lottery. We probably wouldn't know what to do with that money and use it in the right fashion, right? But he provides, right? He even says that the sparrows, they don't worry about where they're getting their next meal. I think they get it from my wife in the backyard. You know, she uh, feeds them every day. But the birds of the air, the fish in the ocean, they don't worry about their next meal. God provides. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. It's my prayer that these words will comfort you, that they'll give you hope, that maybe if you've been lost from the Lord, you'll draw near to him. Maybe if you don't know What's on the other end of the rainbow? What's on the other end of this life? Maybe this will give you a glimpse of my belief and my hope. If you'd like to know more, ask me or one of the other chaplains who would be available today. <coughs> so I ask in conclusion on this, what, what is your attitude today? Is it an attitude of hope? Or is it an attitude of despair, of loss, of strife? It's times like this that we come together and we put aside our differences and we rebuild relationships and we realize the importance of life, the importance of fellowship, the importance of camaraderie. And that's one thing that we build here in the firehouse is camaraderie. You'll see a little bit of that as we continue through our service. As our, uh, our fire department traditions are what draw us near and draw us close together. Val served in this firehouse right here, 112, that we're standing in front of. And I thought what an appropriate place to honor her this day, to celebrate her life, and her accomplishments. Although this celebration of life may give you a, a glimpse of how Val affected everyone and the things that she did while she was in her career here with the fire department, she was loved by everyone here and will be missed. 
And we always say that you don't know what it's like to be part of the fire family until you actually need it. And Roberts and the, the fire family is here for you guys. You guys are always part of our family. And as you grow up and, and have more kids, you want to come to the firehouse and just enjoy being here, you're always welcome. We're always here for you. Ernest Hemingway said, every man's life ends the same way. It's only the details of how he lived or how she lived that distinguish one man or woman from another. Valerie, or Val Lee Roberts, was born in San Francisco, California, and was raised in Berkeley. She was a caring and strong mother, grandmother, sister, daughter, friend. She graduated from Maybeck High School in Berkeley, where she met long life friends. Val completed her bachelor's degree at California State University, Long Beach, where she was a member of the women's rowing team and after college became a physical education teacher as she worked on her goal towards becoming a firefighter. She got her job here at Los Angeles Fire Department in 1993. Can you believe that was 30 years ago? 1993. 30 years ago, she started her active duty with the Los Angeles Fire Department. She was assigned to Drill Tower 89 in North Hollywood. The only thing that, there's two, we have two drill towers. One's in North Hollywood, and one is here in the harbor. And in the peak of summer, you'd rather be here in the harbor. Nope, Val went to 89's in the valley where I'm sure it was 100 degrees or 110 or, I haven't been out there in a while. Still hot out there? Uh, she did her probationary houses at 52's, 92's, and 93's. 52's is Hollywood. 92's, Century City, and 93's, Tarzana. After that, she went on to become a firefighter and worked at Fire Station 100 in the West Van Nuys area. 68's, Mid City. 85's, Harbor City, which is where I work. 6's, Angelino Heights. And 13's, Pico Union, K-Town, or Koreatown. And in 2000, she became firefighter paramedic and worked at 35's in the Los Feliz area over by the Griffith Observatory and then came down here at uh, Fire Station 112 to the ports of call. You can tell a lot about somebody when you read through their career assignments where they worked. These are all great assignments. Valerie worked at some of the busiest stations this city has to offer. And she spent an appropriate amount of time at each one. Sometimes you look at a career and someone has just loads of transfers and you gotta think, man, did that person not get along with anybody? And other times you see, you know, one or two assignments and you think, wow, that person really knew that district and really contributed to that area. But then you see someone like Val who went around, who got her experience in Hollywood, in the downtown area, in the brush area, in the metro rail, in the valley, at the boats, at the port, in the hills, like when you see a career like that, you just think, wow, Valerie knew what she was doing. Valerie loved being, uh, being active as well as traveling the world off the beaten trail. During her life, she loved traveling to Europe, South and Central America, Asia, and she shared her love of travel with her children and her father by taking them on adventures. Val was known for her positive attitude no matter what diversity came her way. She passed away suddenly while living in Hawaii after battling cancer for years. And Val survived by her three children, Jordan and Dominique Zonders, Namaste Roberts, Sebastian Roberts, a grandchild, her sister Catherine, nieces, nephews, and a host of longtime friends. Val loved her friends and family and was thankful she could be with her family until her final time. Rest in the arms of our Lord, sister. A family friend of mine uh, wrote this poem I thought was appropriate for today, and it's called I Planted a Seed. And I, as I read it, I, I thought of 
um, Jordan, Sebastian, Namaste. I thought of you guys as I read this. It says, I planted a seed a while ago, a simple little thing. I placed it there in hope one day of the fruit that it would bring. I watered it and tended it and kept the weeds pulled out and watched in glad amazement and a plant grew from a spout, sprout. The blossom came on early and then the killer frost. I was saddened when the buds fell off and I saw the harvest lost. Then came a long hot summer, then the biting winter's blast, and I trembled for that tender plant. I prayed that it would last. Now toughened by the heat and cold and rooted deep in earth, another spring arrived one day and brought a new rebirth. And many seasons now have passed away and it thrills my heart to see that tiny seed I dropped one day is now a fruitful tree. One of Val's fruits would like to honor her with his mo honor his mother and give us a look at her life on the behalf of his siblings. Uh, I'd like to welcome Val's oldest son, Jordan. First of all, I'd really like to show my appreciation to everybody here today. It means so much to see all these familiar faces and coworkers of my mom. Uh, it means a lot. Um, as you guys know, my name is Jordan, and uh, thinking of this location for my mom, I can't think of a more perfect site to have this memorial. My mom loved being a firefighter. It was her passion, and this is everything and anything we could have asked for. Thank you to the LA Fire Relief Association and the fire department for hosting this. Thank you. Um, as I said, my mom loved being a firefighter, and as her son, I am so proud to be able to say that that is my mother, and. What she accomplished means so much to me and everyone that loved her. In my mind and in my eyes, my mom was a certified badass. People who know her know that to be true as well. My mom would be so happy and honored to have all of you here today. Her friends, family, loved ones, coworkers, In addition to your presence here, we've received many, many expressions of condolences from people my mother touched over the years. Expressions of condolences make me think of words I feel that, that can accurately describe my mother. The words that come to mind are perseverance, independence, courage, generosity, and sensitivity. Indeed, the word life itself Sometimes I wonder if anybody has lived as truly and as fully as she has. I could talk for hours and provide numerous examples demonstrating her remarkable perseverance and, and of course her desire to travel the world, graduate college as a young mother, be a member of a crew team, her decisions to become a firefighter, paramedic while raising her children is evidence not only of her perseverance, independence, and determination, but also her courage and willingness to tackle any challenge. Her generosity with her time, her energy, her advice, and in so many ways provided invaluable support to a remarkable number of people. Over the years and over the past few days, I've heard so many stories from friends, family, and relatives, and neighbors to whom my mother provided help and support in their times of need. wasn't sure how to conclude this, but I would just like to say that my mom would be so happy with everyone being here today. 
Uh, my family appreciate you guys so much. My mom was probably and is one of the strongest and most powerful women I know. And I'm so proud of her and honored to be her son. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Our great city of Los Angeles covers 469 square miles and serves a population of 4 million people. In the Bible, Colossians 3.23 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man. And to serve is what we love to do. It's what we live to do. The Los Angeles Fire Department has 106 fire stations that serve that large square mile. And we respond to over 700,000 911 calls every year. Our core values, these have just changed. So sorry, Chief, I didn't change my notes. <laughs> uh, but they were service, professionalism, integrity, respect, innovation, and trust. And this is everything that Valerie embodied. Leading us in this effort, I'd like to welcome our fire chief, Kristen Crowley, as she presents Val's In Memoriam badge to her son, Jordan. Chief. Oh, well, good morning, everyone. It is an absolute true honor to be here as a fire chief. And I stand before everyone here humbled and honored to represent the 3,778 3, members of Los Angeles City Fire Department. As we collectively wrap our hearts and our arms around everyone here, we come together to honor and remember our fallen firefighter paramedic, Valerie Roberts. To Valerie's entire family, we are so grateful that you shared her with us for over 30 years. We are so grateful. No words will make the pain go away. But just know that Val's influence and impact made a true difference on all of our lives. And I can guarantee you that the LEFD is a better organization because of her. She paved the way for so many people before her and showed us what a true professional looks like and acts like. And from this moment forward, Val's legacy in this world and within the LEFD will live on forever in our hearts and in our minds. And we promise each and every one of you that we will continue to honor her, remember her, and we will never, ever forget firefighter paramedic Valerie Roberts because she left a mark on all of us. On behalf of the LEFD, I have the honor to present the Memorial Firefighter Badge to Val's family. Each and every first responder here who proudly wear the badge over our hearts feels the significance of this loss. The LEFD badge contains many important symbols that reminds us of our mission to preserve life and property and to serve others before self. The eagle on the top of our badge is a constant protector of the city, all seen and ever vigilant. The Maltese cross represents the symbol of protection that signifies the pure commitment of our fellow firefighters who wear it with pride. The filigree is the design around the edge of the badge. It has no beginning, or end, and it represents the eternity of the firefighter's position, always on duty. And lastly, the badge number. Each firefighter wears a number that has been worn before them. This number reminds us of our duty to uphold the fine traditions of the LEFD and to stay committed to protecting the reputation that many before us have worked so very hard to build. 
Firefighter Paramedic Roberts earned her badge. She wore it well, and she lived up to every single expectation of her fellow firefighters and the communities that she so humbly served. We are proud to deem Firefighter Paramedic Roberts worthy of our deepest respect and honor. Until we meet again, never forgotten, always in our hearts, always on our mind. God bless our fallen firefighter paramedic, Valerie Roberts and her entire family. God bless all those of you that are here to support the family. And God bless the women and men in the LAFD uniform. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. In the Old Testament, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 12, says, Though, may, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. We are mighty in numbers, and there's a tight bond among firefighters. We work together, we live together, we stay strong together. And the organization that looks out for us is the United Firefighters of Los Angeles City, IAFF Local 112. The union, they have our health, our safety, and our welfare in their best interest. And I'd like to welcome our union president, Freddie Escobar, as he presents the Holy Bible to Val's son, Jordan. Freddie. Good morning, everyone, and I'm um, hum very humbled to be here before you, and thank you very much to the Roberts family for allowing myself, on behalf of the sisters and brothers of Local 112, the LAFD, and everyone here to share this. Thank you guys very much. As mentioned, my name is Freddie Escobar, and I probably serve as president of the United Firefighters of Los Angeles City, Local 112. On behalf of the rank and file members, it is my honor to be here today as we mourn the passing of firefighter paramedic Valerie Roberts, our beloved sister, and the celebration of life that she deserves. Since she joined the LAFD on March 8, 1993, firefighter Roberts served the people of Los Angeles with courage, integrity, and compassion. And on May 20th, she tragically passed after a long battle with cancer. She was taken from her colleagues, friends, and family far too soon. Unfortunately, I never had the pleasure of working with Valerie personally, but it is very clear how beloved she was at each of her assignments and across the department. In learning about her, colleagues described Valerie as upbeat, kind, and a bright and wonderful human being. One firefighter noted, if you asked her to do something, you know it was going to be done and done correctly, period. Her co-workers at Fire Station 100 commended, commented that Valerie was the athlete boss of our house and brought a great deal of spirit and camaraderie to our shift. Another remark was she was a very outgoing, compassionate, and caring member of the department, one of the best. It is evident that she took care of the crews around her and wanted to bring people together in the station, whether it was fixing them healthy meals, making sure they always complied, applied sunscreen, or joining in a friendly competition at the firehouse. And I have a feeling she never lost. To Valerie's family, please know that our fire family, with more than 3,400 sisters and brothers of the LAFD, are here strong, we will always be here for you whenever you are, whenever we are needed. And as the president of the United Firefighters of Los Angeles City, it is my honor to present you with a special Bible in, <clears throat> in Sister Valerie's memory. There is nothing we can do to replace this loss, but we hope that this Bible and the love from everyone here today will offer you a small amount of comfort. 
May God bless the Roberts family and all who had the honor of knowing and loving her. Rest easy, Valerie. You can count on us to take it from here. Thank you very much again for giving us this honor on this service. Thank you, Freddie. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is from the Old Testament prophet Micah. Micah 6, 8 says, And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? Our benevolent organization that embodies this verse and tends to our widows and orphans is the Los Angeles Firemen's Relief Association. And today to present the American flag to Val Sun. Jordan is our Laffer president, Chris Stein. All right, good morning. My name is Chris Stein, and I'm the president of the Los Angeles Firemen's Relief Association and the Widows, Orphans, and Disabled Firefighters Fund. I feel very blessed to serve the members who serve and also to serve the families who were left behind on a tragic loss like this. Here at the Relief Association, we're tasked with serving our membership. We help guide, support, and navigate during some of the most challenging times in our members' lives. We provide guidance to the family after passing of their loved one. We often provide financial assistance to our members and their families when they experience a tragic loss. Ultimately, what we can deliver to our members during some of the most tragic times in their lives is a sense of peace, that someone will be there to help get them through these difficult times, that we will relieve some of that burden of navigating a death like this, a tragic loss. I'm here to present the Valerie Roberts Memorial flag, but before I do that, I do have a, a personal story. You don't always get the opportunity to speak about somebody on a personal level, but I met Val 22 years ago, March 12th, 2001, as that was my start date of my academy. And Val at that time was assigned as a peer grouper for a short amount of time. And for those of you that are not part of the fire service, the peer groupers are somebody you develop a very close relationship with because they spend the most time with our newest recruits. They're the liaison or the connection between the officers who are doing the grading and the critiquing and our newest members. So there's several of them throughout the, the drill tower, but some of the things that I took from Val is uh, she was a very kind person. She was very willing to help, guide, train, mentor, and teach. And she was very patient and took a lot of time. And uh, as you come out of the drill tower, you develop a relationship with these peer groupers, so you see them from time to time. So as I would run into Val, we always shared good conversation. She always made you feel real comfortable. She was just a good person to be around. And uh, she, will be, she will be missed greatly. And uh, on behalf of all the trustees at the Relief Association, we all mourn her loss, and the department uh, lost a, a very good person, and we need more people like Val. Uh, within our organization that can help guide, teach, mentor some of our newest people. So I'm going to get into presenting the flag. I want to talk a little bit about our flag. And as I speak these words, uh, Jordan, just remember that a lot of these words, a lot of uh, what I'm going to speak about, I think Val embodied a, a lot of this. So it'll be a great remembrance for, for you and your family. The American flag remains a living piece of history and a source of pride and unity for all Americans. The stars and stripes embody the very qualities to make our nation great. Liberty, justice, freedom, love of country, and national purpose. When you look at the flag, there's a couple different words that come to mind. Stars and stripes, star spangled, star -spangled banner, and old glory. Obviously the 13 horizontal stripes, seven red, and six alternating white represent our original 13 colonies. Obviously the 50 stars represent all of our states. When you look at the color red, red stands for valor, sacrifice, strength in mind and spirit that enables a person to encounter danger. What not a better description than Val. When you look at the white, white represents purity, independence, and being true to your beliefs. We believe 
in maintaining a close bond to our members and assisting families in sickness, distress, and death here at the Relief Association. Blue, loyalty, perseverance, and strength. I don't think you could have a person that was more loyal to the organization than, than Val was, right? She loved being a firefighter. As you speak of, you knew that uh, being her family, she, she talked about it a lot. She talked about our, her colleagues quite a bit. And the, and the thing, perseverance and strength, as Valerie battled cancer for over 10 years, we still had a, a close relationship with her at the relief because we were right there bes beside her as she was battling that. And given the fact that the cancer she had, I think she won that battle 10 times over because most people wouldn't have survived that long. So Valerie was a fighter 10 times over that, to make it this long to fight for her family, to fight for um, her life, to enjoy those years more than she, some other people probably would have. So I'd like to take this time to present the Valerie Roberts Memorial Flag to Jordan. Our final tribute is one that, uh, that we signal with a bell, and it's called uh, The Last Call. And I'd like to invite up a couple of our members from Fire Station 112 as they take their place. A final tribute throughout most of history, the life of a firefighter has been closely associated with the ringing of a bell. As he begins his hours of duty, it's the bell that starts it off. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which called her to fight, to fight fire, to place her life in jeopardy for the good of her fellow man. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to the end, it was the bell that would signal the end. And now our sister, firefighter paramedic Valerie Roberts, has completed her tasks, her duties well done, and the bell rings 10 times in memory of and in tribute to her life and her service. Well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> 